You're watching the Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, what you need to know about dental implants. My first guest is an expert on the topic. His name is Dr. Steve Mascaren. Dr. Mascaren, welcome to the program. Thank you. It's great, great to be here. Now, before we get into today's topic, tell us uh, a little bit about your practice. I guess you have three practices. That's right. That's right. I've got three locations. It's the Family Dental Center. So we see all types of patients in my practices. So you don't just do dental implants? No. Okay. I, no. I, most of my, my personal practice, what I do, is about 80% implant related now. And you have associates that work with you as well? That's right. I've got associates in each office that take care of all the family dentistry and all the preventative dentistry. So hopefully we can prevent patients from needing implants in the future. Okay. Now you don't look like a dentist. We normally, the dentists that come on the program don't have this sense of style. Do people tell you that? You don't look well, like you, a dentist? Thank you, Randy. Uh, no, I don't actually hear that because it's a little different in, when I'm in my office. I'm wearing my scrubs or my, my oh, lab jacket. Okay. And, my loops. When did you want to know you wanted to be a dentist? I always ask that. Well, it's funny you should ask that because I've wanted to be a dentist since I was in grade six, grade six, grade seven. And really? All, all of my permanent teeth had come in and you could not see my top teeth. So I was very self-conscious of that. Is that right? And it sort of inspired me. I said, you know, I wish I could change my, I wish I had a different type of smile. And then as I went through high school, okay. there was one, I heard about all these things about cosmetic dentistry and stuff coming, becoming more popular. So the first thing I did when I graduated was I got, I've got 10 plus right. engineers. Nice smile, okay, yeah. okay. But I, I think I sort of, I, fe I feel the pain of my patients when they're conscientious of their smile. Their you say there's a lot of people though that really, the, their smile, or lack of a great smile in their opinion, really affects their lives. Oh, absolutely. Holds them back. Absolutely, holds them back from all kinds of things. I mean, the, the psychological and emotional effects of tooth loss or a poor smile are, you know, conscious and so the lack of uh, confidence in social situations and this is I hear this every day from my patients Randy okay uh, they avoid social situations they avoid family parties just because of their smile they avoid going out and when they do go out they don't really enjoy it because especially patients that are missing all of their teeth because they're constantly aware of these plastic teeth covering the roof of their mouth that's what they tell you oh every day I hear this okay. um, fear of intimacy because of their teeth. Yes, yeah. Kissing, they avoid kissing. But you're a dentist, of course you would, uh, you know, well, think about Well, it's not because I'm a important. dentist. I mean, it's a, it's a fact out there, whether it's good or bad. Bad teeth, smile is associated with so many, it's a, with social status. Confidence okay. to get a job, re relationships. It's the first thing people notice. In fact, if you look at those shows that, that your friend Bill Dorfman does on Extreme yeah. Makeover, the things that people notice after having all these other surgeries, which is wonderful, but the things they notice the most are the teeth and the hair. Yeah, it's no, the first thing true. people see. It's these white teeth. They say, I mean, your, your body's covered by clothes for ninety percent, most of the time, anyways. And all they notice is your teeth. You That's do remember people... somebody with a nice smile. There's no doubt about Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Now, why the focus, by the way, at dental implants with all the areas of dentistry? Why do you like it so much? For what it does for my patients, I started getting interested in implants about twelve years ago. That's when I started all my training because I had a lot of patients in my practice. I've got a denture technician that works for me full time. I've been with her for almost 15 years that works right in my office. I have a denture lab. So I had, I kind of sort of inherited a lot of denture patients. Yeah. And initially when I started doing implants, I sort of limited it to the denture wares to have snap on dentures. And when I saw the difference it made in people's lives and I, I, it created a lot of passion in me for the changes it made. When I saw that it could cha help change somebody's life, restore their confidence, restore their health, watching them be able, and just the simple things that I hear, I can eat an apple again, I can eat corn on the cob. So in Canada, you know, we're talking about dentures today, we're talking about dental implants. I mean, are there thousands and thousands of people that no, are wearing millions dentures? millions and millions of oh, people. Oh, really? Yes. And you say, and I love what you told me on the phone, that if they knew how good it would be to have dental implants, to give them something fixed in their mouth, they couldn't go back. Absolutely. You believe that? I, I wish, I talk about this with my staff all the time, I wish that I could give a denture wearer at least two implants for a day to hold their lower denture in. Like a snap-in, snap-in? And they would never go back. They wouldn't. They, they would not believe what they'd been missing out on. But I still hear people can eat steaks and things like that with dentures. Is, is that just not true? Well, They're when, not chewing it very well? Or? Well, when people say that they, I can eat whatever I want, yeah. that maybe they can, and again, I hear this all the time, so I know it's true. This is your patients talking. Absolutely. Okay. They can put it in their mouth and it's going, the food may be going in their mouth, but they're not tasting it like they should be, and they're not digesting it the way that they should because be. Because it's not chewing. And it's got an interesting point. Dramatic effect on 
their overall health and nutrition. In fact, absorption of proteins, they don't get the protein that they need, which affects the distribution of the fat tissue in their so body. So why aren't they all doing it though? If it's, if it's as easy as, like you say, two dental implants to give them something that could be fixed. In their minds, their denture, they're comfortable with it. They don't realize how bad it is. They don't realize how poorly they're functioning and how it's affecting their overall health, confidence, and they've sort of accepted it. Is this one of those things after the procedure they say to you, I, you know, I should have done this years ago? I, 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 every implant patient, every set of a, a case of implants that I do, I hear from all my patients, why did I wait so long? And I should have done this years ago. I wish I would have done this when I had my teeth out. And by that You say I the mean, denture wear doesn't even go to the dentist for the most part anymore. That's right, that's right. So nobody's telling them to do it? I guess. They, who's gonna tell them to do it? They, they don't know. They don't want to see a dentist. They think they're done with a dentist. They have dentures, yeah. right? Do people but still not like dentists? They need to see a dentist. I mean, isn't it a painful process? Well, this is another thing that keeps people away from even looking into it as an option, and especially denture wearers, because the number one concern or is fear. They're afraid of the unknown. They don't think it's going to. They think it's a long, painful, expensive, drawn out process. Absolutely not. They don't complain about pain for the most part. I, I've got. Uh, more than 90% of my patients take Advil the day of, and that's it. Let's begin with the, the different categories of dental implant patients that you see. Yeah, we have, the there's basically four categories that we see in our office. Patients that are missing one tooth, patients that are missing two or more of their teeth, but they've got generally healthy teeth otherwise. And uh, then we have the patients that are missing all of their teeth, that come to us with dentures or about to have dentures that want something to hold them in. And the other category that we're seeing more and more of, and th these are the ones that we really try and reach out to, are the ones that have, not necessarily a few, but the teeth that they have left are terminal. The majority or all That means all they've of them. been told by that somebody. That means they that... have to go, okay? okay? And what happens with these people is they leave it, they procrastinate, they let time go on. The problem with gum, or dental problems and gum disease, it doesn't hurt. So they put it off, they put it off, and, and their situation becomes worse and worse. And Emotionally and psychologically, they've been suffering for years with these. But that's an easy one teeth. for you to take care of. Absolutely. I mean, this is the thing. To one reverse. of the biggest misconceptions. You never go without your teeth. In fact, in our office, we do have the capability and the technology to give you a brand new set of permanently attached teeth in one day. So we do have patients. Yeah, we do, we have patients that have dentures that have suffered with dentures. So somebody watching time. this, they have dentures, they go in, they could walk out with teeth. Yeah. How soon can they eat? Right away. Really? Right away. Yeah. They it don't is, know what they're missing? Is that uh, what you think? Unbelievable. I mean, I've got patients cry on me because it's so liberating for them. They feel young again, they feel alive, they can eat what they want, and they can taste their food. Now, you brought models of dentures. Before we go into the denture, because I have a lot of questions for dentures. Mm -hmm. The one tooth. You talked about the different categories. Why get a dental implant if you're only missing one tooth? What happens when you're missing one tooth? The second that tooth comes out, the bone starts shrinking. In the hole? In the into the, the hole, okay. yes. And the other teeth, the neighboring teeth, will start collapsing towards okay. the hole. So you lose those other teeth quicker. There's more force on the neighboring teeth. And again, the problem is it doesn't hurt, it doesn't cause pain. So is, is that obviously where it all starts, one tooth? That's right. It's, it's, it, it snowballs from there. Is there any proof, though, that if you did a dental implant, that you may stop that process? That means the, the future uh, loss no, of teeth? It's, it's basically not even up for debate. There's so much research behind it. As soon as, you get the, as soon as the implant goes in to that missing space, it will stop that bone loss. Why? I mean, what is it? The because pressure? Because it, it, it's, it's, you know, it's almost like I give the analogy. It's like, a, it's like your, the bone in your arm. If you cut the muscle in your arm, there's no stimulation for that bone, so it will shrink and deteriorate. And, and that's atrophy. what happens in the mouth? Exactly, same thing. Okay, now three and four teeth. People missing three and four teeth. Uh, very common. Yeah, it's very, very common because you know, the, you're know you missing one tooth, you leave it, and then all of a sudden it happens over time, but before you know it, you're missing two, three, four teeth. Those patients start to pay more attention because they're getting really nervous about a denture, and rightly so. Are those the people that need to really do something? Absolutely, if, because there, no matter what we do with dental implants, there is nothing like your own teeth. There will never be anything as good as your own teeth. So if you can save them and prevent the damage from happening, you know, it's so you don't need a tooth for every tooth that's missing? No, and that, this is one of the biggest misconceptions. We can talk about the other misconceptions after, but one of the biggest misconceptions is it's, it's so expensive and so much yeah. work and so painful. I've got to get every single one of my teeth replaced with an implant, so I've got, and they start counting their teeth. I need 28 <laughs> dental implants okay. and 28 teeth to go on top, but it's, it's far from the truth. You know, it, if you're missing one tooth, one implant. 
Okay. All right. If you're missing three tooth teeth, sometimes you can get away with two. But but the remarkable thing is if you're missing all of your teeth, now we have the technology in most cases with four implants, you can have a permanent set of full upper teeth or full lower teeth supported by four implants. Something that just snaps in Which there? Is, it, no, no, this is permanently, oh, permanently in there. Permanently attached. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, let's take a look at the model after. You also have some, uh, what are those, denture models, what you could do for that? That's right. Okay. And also the process. I want to know what people can expect on day one, the downtime, uh, and things like that. You're watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Up next, uh, what you need to know if you're a denture wearer about your options for dental implants. We'll be right back.